guys, Jared Wesley here of Live Traders, and welcome to the first weekly lesson of 2020. I hope you guys had a great holiday and are ready to kick some butt this year in trading. This week's topic, guys, is twofold. Uh, I start this week's video off uh, for the first 10 or 15 minutes talking about money management. I know it's a topic I've covered previously in the past. I know it's a topic that I cover frequently, but there's a reason for that because it's the single most important topic in trading, period. Okay, I know you guys love charts, I know it. But money management, trading plans, psychology, they're the most important parts of trading. I've been getting a lot of emails lately from people doing foolish and stupid things. I've put some of those emails in this week's lecture, this week's lesson, so you guys can see what foolish people do sometimes. Not doing it to knock on those people, but to show you these things really happen. You have to control your money first. After money management, guys, I go into multiple time frame analysis. There are three or four new slides in here that have never been seen before. Um, they are not in professional trading strategies even. Uh, they're quite new. So I want to go over that so you guys can see how to get in trades sooner using multiple time frames, as well as how to avoid trades by using multiple time frames. Uh, it's a very important lesson that you need to understand. Now, back to the other point, guys, because this is important. Trading will likely be the single hardest thing you've ever tried or ever done in your life. Outside of being in the military, it's probably the hardest business there is out there or one of, okay? And many of you guys are coming in overhyped, undercapitalized, where your expectations grossly exceed your experience. And I'm not trying to be a, a dream crusher here, guys. I am trying to give you a realistic chance to succeed in this business, okay? So you have to understand that money management is number one. One And that's why I'm going over it again, because it's the beginning of a new year. And if you don't use proper money management and don't risk small amounts versus large amounts when you're new, you won't be here next year. And the market won't care. You'll just be another statistic. So what? Okay. But if you care about yourself and the future of your trading to succeed, you first have to last. And if you can't last, you won't succeed. Money management is the, ray, the way or the reason you will succeed if you do it properly. Okay, so it's the, it's the reason I've started this year off with that particular topic so that you guys can drill it into your head just how important it is to manage and control risk. Your account comes first. Okay, so I hope you enjoy this week's lecture, guys. As always, you can get a $1.30 day trial into the Live Traders chat room. Uh, I do weekly videos in there, sorry, weekly lectures in there that you get to see. We do trades in there, $1 for 30 days. You no longer have to email us. You can just go to the website or click the link in uh, the description or click the link in the video here as well. Everything is automated now. New things for 2020 are coming up, guys. I'll keep you guys posted on what we're doing here shortly. Um, but for now, enjoy the video. I'm Jared Wesley of Live Traders. Let's get to it. Today's topic, guys, is staying out of losing trades, how to look inside of a chart. Um, a few weeks back, because I haven't done a lecture in a couple weeks, a few weeks back, uh, we we dug inside of a chart and we looked at like five different buy setups and we rated those buy setups in terms of the quality of the buy setups because not every buy setup is equal. Well, today I'm going to do something similar, but also dramatically different. I'm going to uh, put together a few charts and I want you guys to take a look at them uh, and then I'm going to surprise you with something. Uh, it's not exactly what you think. But before I do that, before I get into that, uh, I want to just rehash a topic because I don't think that I can go over this topic enough times for it to truly, truly sink in. Uh, one of the biggest reasons that traders out there are not making it in this business is because of that right there, money management, okay? It's always your number one job. And I know I talk about this topic probably till you guys are blue in the face. I beat dead horses over this topic. But just from comments I've seen this morning in the chat room, I'm going to show you an email I got two days ago, all right, uh, plus emails I've gotten months ago, etc. This topic is the single most important factor to your success in trading, and it's also the biggest reason this industry gets a bad name, because most traders look like gamblers. 
If you were to just watch them, if you were a fly on the wall in their office, you'd think, wow, is that person just a straight up gambler? There's no rhyme or reason to what they do. They don't take stop losses. They risk too much money too soon. They want to get rich quick. They're always trading little penny stocks, hoping they'll move $5 in one day, uh, et cetera, and so forth. Okay. Um, what is interesting about you know this, and this quote is accurate, is the irony of obsessive loss aversion is that our worst fears become realized in our attempt to manage them. This is particularly accurate or true for people that don't take stop losses, right? You think, oh, I'm just going to let the stock go a little past my stop loss because it'll ultimately bounce back up, right? It'll ultimately bounce back up. And when it does, I'll get out at break even or I'll get out for a little bit of profit. And then it keeps going lower. And it only takes one or two of those to really do some serious damage to your account. So it's, it's just something you guys need to understand, period. End of discussion, all right? Money management's your number one job. To succeed in this business, you first have to last. Now, the next slide is just a little bit for fun, but it's really true, okay? It's a little bit for fun, okay? This is what you guys look like without proper money management, with no trading plan, being stupid, gambling, okay? The market, guys, is filled with everybody, high-frequency trading firms, JP Morgan, Goldman Sachs, hedge funds, pension funds, you, me, everybody is what the market is filled with, okay? But this is the market when you come in with no plan, right? You're just a little old goldfish, man, and, and you're, you're, you're exposing yourself to so much risk, okay? When you trade without a plan or you use bad money management, all right? It's, you know, that, that saying in poker, you know, if you can chop a guy's leg out, you have him. Right? Basically, if you can take half his stack, he's done. Well, in trading, think about the opposite. Think about if you lose half your stack in the first three, six, nine months. Say you start with 10 grand, 20 grand, 50 grand. You lose half of that. You're going to have a really, really hard time making money because you got to make 100% just to get back to break even. All right? So it's funny and silly and cute, whatever you want to call this slide, too many people are doing this. You're coming into this business unprepared, overhyped, undercapitalized, want to get rich quick, and your expectations grossly, grossly exceed your experience level. Stop trying to get rich quick. Stop it. All right, there's way too much marketing hype in this business. And the problem we have is there's no oversight for somebody. If you had a boss, they would fire you if you did some of the stuff you do as a trader, right? Slap you on the wrist first time or warn you the first time, slap you on the wrist the second time, fire you the third time. How many times over would you all have been fired by now for the stupid stuff that you do in trading? Many, many times over, okay? And that's where I think when we're here in the live traders chat room, we're completely different. I took one trade today. Unwall took one trade today. He actually took two today. Everybody else is just calling trades because they want it to look good. What I'm getting at, guys, is your job is to make money, to make money. Charts are just the vehicle that we use to make money. I said it yesterday in the room, but some people use a hammer and nails to make money. Some people sell flowers to make money. Some people sell hot dogs to make money. We use charts to make money, okay? That is the vehicle we use to get those dollars and cents that we want to earn, okay? You don't have to sit here to take 20 trades a day. You take what the market is willing to give, and most of the time it's one to five trades a day. That's it. Okay, now let's take a look at foolish stupidity. If you guys think this is a joke, I want to put it front and center for you. Now, remember, these next slides are emails and comments people have made to me. I can't verify if people have actually lost this much money, but why would they send me the email otherwise? So this is one I got there. It says it right there. January 5th, okay, 2020. That's not that long ago, okay? says, hey, Jared, are you able to reach out to so-and-so regarding technical trading extensions course? Let me know. Okay, this was sent to me by info at Live Trader, sent to me. Okay, I'm going to read it. Very interested. I've been trading for three years now. I made $2.3 in the pot market in Canada and then lost $2.8 million doing stupid trades. Now, think about what I just said here. $2.3 million up to $2.8 million down, basically a $500,000 swing. Okay, I am desperate, working on borrowed money. I can't fail anymore, I will lose my house. Process this for a second, process this, okay? Somebody made $2.3 million and then they lost 2.8 million. 
The problem with most of you right this very second, you're thinking the wrong way, okay? You're thinking the wrong way, okay? And you're going, what do you mean, Jared? What does that mean? What I mean by this is you're all thinking right now, wow, how did he give back $2.3 million, right? This is what you're all thinking, am I wrong? How did he give back $2.3 million? I'm thinking the opposite way. I'm going, as a new trader, how did you even make $2.3 million in the first place? By doing stupid shit. By risking way too much money to see the only way you could have made $2.3 million. So you were wrong from day one. Just because you got lucky and made $2.3 million does not make you a good trader. You got lucky. And clearly we've, we've, we've confirmed it was luck because you lost 2.8. Now, I'm not trying to be rude to the person who sent this email to me. Clearly, I've, I've taken out their email address, their phone number, their name, everything. All right? What I'm trying to get at, guys, is people do this stuff. This is real. People really actually do this. Okay? Let's go, let's go another step further. Okay? This is from a couple years ago. All right? Reset. Explain. We had a little, we had a, a prop program here at Live Trades. We no longer have it, so don't email me over it. Okay? I would explain what I did today. I made a mistake that I won't make again. May I have a reset for my max loss? Okay? I won't do it again. I made a mistake. If you hit your max loss for the day, it wasn't a mistake. Your max loss for the day is usually a pretty good sized number, a pretty, pretty big number. And this person is begging for a reset. I've already deposited new funds. Why would we want to reset you if you're if you're undisciplined enough to do this? And the won't is in capital. I won't make that mistake again. Now, this is a rhetorical question. I want you to ask yourself this question. Serious question. How many times have you made a mistake in trading and you said, I'll never do that again, only to make the same exact mistake tomorrow or a week later or a month later? And not just once, but probably five or 10 times. You don't have to answer me. Just ask yourself that question. How many times have you done that? I know I've done it at least a hundred times. At least a hundred, maybe a thousand, and I'm not kidding. How many times I sold too soon and said I wouldn't do it again and did it at least 50 more times? A hundred more times? This is different because this has to do with actual money. Here's another person from a few months back, okay? The stock symbol is Fran. It's not the person's name, okay? Account started at $2,400. I didn't really have a plan for risk, just playing it off how much money I was willing to lose. Wow, that sounds like a great approach, okay? And at the time, it was $1,000. So do the math. This person was willing to lose $1,000 in one day with a $2,400 account. I don't know the exact percentage, but it's gotta be somewhere around 40%, okay? 40% of your account. You were willing to lose in one day? Now, does this, does this caption seem a lot more appropriate now? You guys are doing silly, stupid stuff and they're just waiting for it. The market is just going, come on in, the water's fine. And you're still a goldfish doing silly stuff, okay? Now, let's go down to it. I wanna get to a point where that one trade should make me, or such, I know that no one trade should make me or in one trade should break me. Good, at least you're making progress. That's not where I'm at right now with a thousand dollar risk on each trade. In this case, it's almost 50% of my account. Now think about that. That's not where I'm at right now. Well, that decision could be made in about a half of a second. I'm not gonna do that anymore, right? But that's not where you're at right now. The whole concept I'm making is just showing you three examples of what stupid looks like. And yet, you guys are still continuing to do it over and over. How do I know? I saw somebody in the chat room today say, hey, Jared, what's an appropriate level of risk for a brand new trader, right? Somebody this morning, in fact, it was the first comment in the chat log today. How much per trade is a good start? And I said, and I quote, I'm reading this, never risk more than $10 when you're new. That means don't lose more than $10 on a trade period. The person chimes back, $10,000? I wrote $10, okay? And somebody said, laughing out loud, jokes? I said, I'm not joking. The person writes back, waste of time, 10 bucks. That I just literally, I could take a screenshot of it. 
That's exactly what happened. I probably should take a screenshot of it so in case people call me out on it, okay? That is stupid. This is what you guys are doing out there. You're gambling. Now, one more slide, and then we're going to get into the good stuff, okay? I promise we're going to get into the charts because you guys hate when I talk text slides. Okay, this is why you do this shit. $5,000 into 1.3 million in just three trades. Guess what? I got this. This was a couple of years back. This is something somebody emailed me. Are you kidding me? In this case, I'm talking about legal insider trading. Traders who have consistently signaled 450. I can't even read it without laughing. 610. That's why you're sending emails out because you took five grand into $1.3 million. So it wasn't good enough to take 5K into 1.3 because imagine if you could do the same exact thing with 1.3 million, you'd have Warren Buffett money. So it's so good that you're sending emails out to people. Register for the imminent briefing here. You'll see how just three of these trades could have generated, could have, that's the key word, could have generated $1.3 million in profit. This is why the industry gets a bad name. This is why you guys do silly things, because you're reading this stuff, you're believing this. There's nowhere else in life that this is actually true. Where else in life can you take five grand and 1.3 million in just three moves, right? Now, this is a, a, a comment that I got on YouTube. I blacked out their name and the other person's name. I was risking 5% at one point, three to 5%. And this is where this video came from. And the guy said, that's a lot. And yes, it is a lot, it's too much, all right? The guy you're referring, often referring, was risking 80% of his six times leveraged account or 480% of his real account to turn however much into $140,000. Insane risk, yes. Insane risk. Why would you ever want to do that? You're just going to, your odds of blowing up are so increased, it's not even funny. By multitudes, I can't even think of how many times X it's increased when you're risking 80% of your account on every trade. It takes one trade to basically blow up your account. That's insane, right? It's insane. People want to hear you agree with them. They want to hear you say, yes, you can take 10,000 and turn it into 100 or 10,000 and turn into it. That's, when you agree with somebody, they get your business. When you tell them they're an idiot, they go to somebody else and wait for that person to agree with them. And they wait and they'll do this little circle jerk until somebody agrees with them. It's horrible, but that's because they're believing too much of this crap. Now, again, guys, this isn't just true for small fish or you guys, it's true for big business too, right? It's true. Big businesses do stupid things too. All right. Enron did some really stupid stuff. Bear Cerns got his hand in a cookie jar and never got it back out. MCI WorldCom. This is just a few. AIG, whatever. Big business makes stupid mistakes too. The only difference is when they make dumb mistakes, they almost never go to jail for it and they get golden parachutes when they leave. You're not getting a golden parachute if you F up in trading. You're going to leave with your head between your legs and broke. You're not getting a $100 million payout when you, when you take a company into the ground. Why am I making such a stern point about this? Because you don't get a second chance once you've blown up your account. For some of you, you have plenty of money to start over. For many of you, you don't. It's a one-shot deal for you. Take it seriously, okay? Some of you have seen these charts. I'm not going to go over them for very long. Guys, that's General Electric, okay? It's a $55 stock. Now it's a $12 stock. It happens, okay? This is Citigroup. It was a six five hundred fifty dollar stock. Now it's a seventy eight dollar stock. It happens, okay. What I'm getting at is, don't let your ego write checks that your trading account can't cash. Even big companies mess up, okay. Be smart. Trade smart. Use proper money management. Yes, I went on a little tangent there for about fifteen minutes but I'm trying to save you guys from being like everybody else in this business. And you know what most people become in trading? A statistic. And the market doesn't care. It's just gonna keep on marching along. The market just is. It's like the Wizard of Oz, it just is, okay? Your job is to navigate it properly. And the only way you can do that is use good money management. All right, now onto the charts, the part you guys wanna hear about, okay? The part you guys wanna hear it. 
So we're going to talk a little bit about multiple time frames, which I've done before in the past. That that in and of itself is not a brand new topic, but we're going to do it a little differently today. I don't a couple of slides in here I've never gone over. I've never they're not in PTS. I've never gone over a couple of these slides in here. Okay, yeah, exactly. Somebody in the chat room saying, "Hey, this is the sexy stuff," and you're right. It is the sexy stuff because nobody wants to hear about psychology. Nobody wants to hear about money management, but they're the single two most important things in this business. But you all love these slides, don't you? Let's take a look at charts, 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 charts. You guys are misdirected and misguided. Charts are important, but they're not nearly the most important. So when all time frames are in alignment, trading odds increase, but this rarely occurs. It's true. It's really hard to get a daily chart, a 60, a 15, a five, a two, and a one minute chart looking the same all of the time. It rarely happens. The good news is we don't have to have that happen to have multiple time frames in alignment. You really are only looking for say two or maybe three time frames in alignment. Okay. So, you know, we look at SDC today, that daily pseudo three bar play with a 15 minute three bar play that is getting multiple time frames with the same picture. That's the goal, right? So trend analysis, guys, teaches you an objective method to determine what trend or stage the stock is in. Remember, we talked about stage one, stage two, stage three, stage four. I did that a few weeks back, so you should be familiar with that. If not, go rewatch that video. Okay, so you have to decide what time frame you want to actually trade in. This means buy the stock in one minute, two minute, five minute. And then you also have to find a longer term bias time frame. So we took it two things here. There's an entry time frame. For me, that's typically a two minute chart. And then there's a bias time frame. For me, that's typically a 60 minute or a daily. As long as you can get those two or three time frames in alignment, that's all you need. And then after that, you know, you apply trend, supply and demand, bar by bar analysis to find the best opportunity. So I want you guys to take a look at this, all right? Take a look at this, all right? What do we see here? Well, we see a little bit of a stock that's bottoming it out right here, right? Put in a slightly lower low, puts in a wide range green bar, a little bit of a red bar white, and then moves higher, puts in a slight higher high with a higher low and a higher high and a higher low and a higher high and a higher low. And you get the picture here. This is looking nice, right? If you just take a look at that, you're like, wow, that's, that's really pretty. Okay, and you're looking at this thinking to yourself, wow, there are maybe one, maybe two, maybe three on a breakout, maybe four, maybe five opportunities potentially to buy this stock on the way up. Okay, now a couple weeks back, and I'm going to jump ahead to this slide real briefly. A, a few weeks back, we talked about this, right? We broke down a chart and we talked about when stocks transition. Right? We talked about retest and failures, breaking of trend lines. So you've seen this slide before, but it's very important because we're going to talk a little bit about this today, right? When a stock might turn the corner, when it breaks a trend line, et cetera, and so forth. So you'll see this in just a second. But right now, we're going to focus on this. And it's going to surprise you in a minute what this really is, okay? Well, I've tricked you here, and it's not your fault. I've done it on purpose, okay? This isn't what you think it is. Okay, right now, if you were to show this to me, I'd tell you, wow, I see a beautiful buy setup here, one here, maybe a breakout here, a buy setup here, and a buy setup here. And then you'd be, you'd be right to think that. There'd be nothing wrong with thinking that. Okay. Now what I've done is I've sliced it up. I've taken three pictures of this. I've literally taken this chart right here and I've cut it into three pieces. Okay. All right, one, two, three. And I've divided it, separated it, and I put boxes around it so you can see the separation. Now you guys are thinking, well, why are you doing that, Jared? What's the purpose? What is the purpose? We're gonna see that in just a minute. So divide it up. What I'm trying to get you guys to do is look inside of a chart, all right? So if we take a look at this, guys, different time frames provide different pictures. And this is why you always, always wanna look at multiple time frames when you go and take a trade. Because what looks good on a two minute doesn't look the same on a five or a 15 minute. What looks good on a five minute might not look good on a 60 minute. You might look at something, and I get this frequently in the chat room where somebody will show, for example, a one minute buy setup, but the stock might be up like seven bars on the 60 minute chart. I'm sitting there going, look at the 60. The one minute might have a buy setup, might look like this potentially, but the 60 minute might be massively extended. So what I've done here is I've taken a two minute chart and I'm showing you what it potentially looks like on a five minute. So you're looking at a two minute, you go lower high, lower high, lower high. Wow, this could be a buy setup. 
And on a five minute chart, it could be what? An engulfing bar, a turnaround bar, et cetera. Now, in this case, the two minute might have provided a better entry, an earlier entry, because you could still buy the turnaround bar at the top, right? You could buy the high right here, but you have to put your stop down here. And one of the biggest rubs with a turnaround bar is what? They have really wide stop losses. Okay, so buying up here and putting a stop down here, yes, it's a slightly more secure entry because you've completely engulfed the red bar, which means buyers are showing commitment here, okay? But you're also paying for that commitment with a much wider stop loss. So it's a give and take. It's a more secure entry, but it's a wider stop loss. So the risk to reward is damaged. You're caught in the middle. Well, this is where multiple time frames could help you. You might start this position with a partial, a lot, maybe a half lot down here. And then once it engulfs completely, maybe add back, maybe. But that's not the point of this slide. The point of this slide is to show you that different time frames show different pictures. Okay, show different pictures. Now we're going to see what this is all about. Okay, so now you saw this, then you saw this. You know what this really is? You know what this really is? It's this. I took a chart on three different time frames and I put it together. I didn't delete any candlesticks. I took a chart, which was this, and I literally just put it together. I didn't delete a single candlestick. I just added them all together. And part of this, what you're seeing here is a 15 minute chart. Part of what you're seeing here is a five minute chart. Part of what you're seeing here is a two minute chart, all on the same stock. And you're going, what's the purpose? The purpose is for us to do this, is to look inside, inside the candlestick. So let's do that. All right, let's do that, okay? So we started here at the bottom with a 15 minute chart, okay? And we had a wide range green bar with a red bar and then three more, four more green bars. Now, this right here, I circled it here in pink, is this buy setup on the five minute chart, right? So you're looking at this little red bar here on a 15 is actually this three bar pullback on the five minutes. So we're taking this on the 15 and we're drilling down and looking inside of it. Now, some of you are thinking, well, what's the purpose of this? The purpose of this is to get not only better entries with regard to price, better priced entries, it's also to give you what? More secure entries, okay? So now the question on this one becomes, is this a good buy side? And this is a challenging one. Yes, in a vacuum, and that's another point of this, is to not to get you not to trade in a vacuum. If you trade in a vacuum, you go, wow, this is beautiful in the five minute. But if you look at the 15, you might have some questions here. Why? The question would be, well, it did put in a lower low down here. So we're not really in an uptrend yet. The wide range green bar on the 15 is nice, right? It's taking out a lot of red bars. That's a positive sign, but we can't ignore it did put in a lower low. Would I have taken this? Mm, that's a tough question because it's just bouncing off the low here and it has a red bar, engulfing bar here. But again, by the time you take the five minute buy setup, you don't know if this is going to be an engulfing bar yet, right? So when you're taking this buy setup, it's actually at the bottom of this green bar, okay? So it would be a somewhat aggressive five minute buy setup. Now we move up a little bit more on the five minute chart now. Now we're focused on the five minute. Green bar, green bar, green bar, green bar, green bar. Oh, it's a one bar pullback. But if we drill down to a two minute chart, what do we have? It's an actual buy setup. So some of you will look at this and go, I can't take that, that's garbage. There's nothing there, Jared. But if you drill down to the two minute, you have your lower high, lower high, lower high, bottoming tail doji bar buy setup that ultimately pushes higher. So it is interesting how we can take these three and put them together and they form this. That's just for fun. Honestly, it's just for fun. But what's more important is looking inside the bar because we can see here right in this chart that we do have an example of a five minute that kind of looks like this and a two minute that kind of looks like this, which is this right here, right? This engulfing bar on the five is this buy setup on the two. 
So again, the purpose of this, guys, is to help you guys get better entries, better priced entries, but that are still reliable. And you can do this by drilling down. So when you're looking at charts, five minutes, two minutes, you can imagine without even looking at the two, what the two minute might look like just by looking at the five minute, okay? So the point I'm making is pattern recognition is more than looking at one chart. It's looking at that one chart and imagining what it might look like on a higher or lower time frame. And in doing so, you'll be able to get better entries. Ultimately, you should look at the other chart, right? Don't just imagine it, imagine it in your head and look at the other chart. So when we look at this, I don't know if I would take this five minute buy setup, even though it looks beautiful on the five, because of where the 15 minute is. However, by the time we get up to this area, I'm looking at this on the two minute going, you know what? I now have a higher high and a higher low. This could be pretty good, right? This could be pretty good, all right? So I want you guys to read inside the candle. I really do. I want you to look inside the chart. It'll help you get better entries and it will also help keep you out of bad entries, which is the next topic. So this is showing you how to get a better entry by using different time frames and looking inside. Now let's show you how to stay out of trouble by doing the same thing, okay? So, all right. We take a look at this chart. It's a, it's a two minute chart. The last one we kind of went higher and then lower. Now we're gonna go lower and then go higher. So we're doing the opposite for the opposite purpose. Now. If we take a look at this in a micro time frame, which is a two minute chart, and we look at our stages, right? We have a stage one here, it gaps up, even though the, the stage one is, is sideways, we get the gap up, which creates the stage two, right? So the stage one is a sideways area here, it gaps up and goes higher, that's our little stage two. Remember, this is a micro time frame, okay? So we move higher, we pull back, we bounce, we pull back, we bounce, and then we really fail to put in a higher high. So this is our double top stage three retest and failure. Remember I showed you this right here? We went over this a couple weeks ago. It was more like three or four weeks ago now. This is the same concept, but on the long side. Now we're gonna reverse this chart. We're gonna flip it and use the same retest and failure concept on the short side, okay? So we'll go back to the chart. All right. So now we get our double top stage three retest and failure. It tried to go higher and it failed. And what really confirms this failure is when we break under the support area right there, right here where I'm putting my cursor right there. When we break under this, you have room all the way down to the low of the day and possibly a gap fill, possibly. All right, so this is our stage three in a micro time frame. We move into an early stage four. Now, when we talk about stage twos and fours, we're looking for what? Multiple higher highs and higher lows. Stage four, multiple, which means two or more. Multiple lower highs and lower lows. So what do we get here? Our first lower low is right here. Our first lower high is right here. Our second lower low is right here. Our second lower high is right here. So two lower highs two lower lows. You could argue by definition, there are two or more lower highs and lower lows, which puts us into an early stage four. So I put a question mark here, but when you break it down by definition, this is a stage four. As soon as this cell setup triggers, we are officially in a stage four because we have two lower highs and two lower lows. Now we're also underneath the declining moving average. It was a rising moving average, but it's no longer rising, it's declining. We're underneath it now. That's a bearish sign. We did what? A retracement back to, anybody? Bueller, Bueller. We did a retracement back to minor price resistance, right? This is level two resistance, minor price resistance. That is a pattern booster right out of the textbook. We also have a topping tail, that's a bearish sign. That's another pattern booster right out of 
the textbook. It's below the moving average. That's another pattern booster right out of the textbook. It's got a narrow range, narrow body bar. That's another pattern booster right out of the textbook. It's got a 50% retracement. Take the top of the pivot here at 64-ish, the bottom of the pivot at 62 50. It's right in the middle. That's another pattern booster right out of the textbook. Guys, if you were grading this on a piece of paper, it would score very highly as a trade you want to short, right? On a micro time frame stage four sell setup, my goodness, it's got everything you want to see. Location items we talk about as being number one, right? Well, it's got all three of them. It's below the moving average. It's back to minor price resistance. It's got a 50% retracement. It's got all three, all three. Plus it has more. Plus it's got a topping tail. Plus it's got a narrow body bar. So again, if you were checklisting this chart, remember I always tell you guys, use a checklist, pilots and checklists, use a checklist. This would score very highly. So it must be, it must be a really good sell setup, right? It's got to be. I, I went through the checklist, but it's only good if you're a vacuum trader, right? Vacuum traders are people that stare at one chart and never look outside of it. They trade in a bubble. They trade in a vacuum. They don't look at the higher time frame. They don't look at the lower time frame. They just look at that time frame and go, oh my gosh, this is amazing. You can't trade like that, guys. You can't trade like that. So what are we really looking at here? I'll let me show you what we're really looking at. That's what we're looking at. This is the exact same stock on the 15 minute chart. This little dot here in, in yellow is showing you where we were, right? Let's go back. There's that yellow dot, okay? There's that yellow dot right here on the sell setup. Beautiful sell setup, right? And this is what you're actually trading. That's what you're trading. Now that you see a higher time frame, you're going, that's the worst sell setup I've ever seen in my life. But when you're trading in a vacuum, there are many, many, many reasons you would want to take this. But we cannot trade in a vacuum. Okay, so let's go back to it. This is what they look side by side. This is the sell setup. This is the buy setup. The two minute failed sell setup confirms the buy setup. And this thing goes higher. You're always going to lean towards the higher time frame. So basically, guys, the failure of this sell setup is confirming the entry on this buy setup. So right here, when this topping tail gets taken out right there, you see like a pseudo three bar play right here. I say pseudo because the red bar goes below it. That area, that area right there is confirming your entry on the 15 minute buy setup. And you always go with the higher time frame bias versus the lower time frame entry, always. All right, and take a look at it. You're coming back right here to what? Support. You have the opening range entry area right there, the opening range, plus this minor price support or level two price support right there bottom and tail doji or you're going to buy it right here and your stop loss is going to be here and you're going to sell it right at 65 for first target and then ride it out. Oh my gosh. The failure of a pattern in a lower time frame confirms the entry in a higher time frame. Okay? Guys, put it all together and it looks like this. You have to look at multiple time frames. So you saw an example here let me go back for a second, where we drilled down to get a better entry using multiple time frames. We looked inside the chart, right? Inside the chart to get this buy set up. And that helped us get in earlier. Here we did the exact opposite. We looked above the chart. We didn't drill down, we drilled up to keep us out of this terrible sell setup that ultimately failed, but looks really good if you trade in a vacuum. So now you can see how multiple time frames are extremely beneficial. They help you get in earlier and they help you stay out as well. Okay. Now guys, I want you to think about this for a second. All right. 
if you have a three bar pullback on a 15 minute chart, three bar pullback, how often will the two minute likely be in, in a downtrend? How often? If you have three red bars, a three bar pullback on a 15 minute chart, how often will a two minute chart be in a downtrend most likely? So I want you to think about it for a second. Three red bars on a 15 minute time frame. How often will the two minute be in a downtrend? Challenging? The answer you should be giving is almost always. If you have three 15 minute bars that are red, well, how many two minute bars does it take to make one 15 minute bar? About seven and a half. So that's seven and a half bars down. That's seven and a half bars down, and that's seven and a half bars down. Basically, you have 20 bars down. Now, granted, they're not all going to be red. You have a topping tail here. You have a topping tail here. So you're going to have a little bounce. But basically, you have the potential to have 20 red bars on a three-bar 15-minute pullback. So if you have 20 red bars on a two-minute, it's likely going to be in a downtrend. Now, why am I telling you this? So you don't make this mistake. You might get caught up in the vacuum, in the bubble, looking at the two minute and not look at this. Almost every 15 minute buy setup is going to have a micro downtrend on the two minute. Almost every 15 minute buy setup will have a micro two minute downtrend. Micro, one minute, two minute. That doesn't mean you should short it though. Okay? Doesn't mean you should short it. Okay, so not as many slides per se today, but I want you guys really thinking about this stuff. I want you when you're looking at charts to really think what it might look like on a different time frame. Okay, I really want you guys to think about that. So when you're looking at a two minute, think in your mind, well, what does this probably look like on a five minute or 15? What does it probably look like on a one minute? Now, you know what's a real easy way to take care of that? Put all four time frames on your chart in front of you so that you're never looking at a stock in a vacuum. So every time you go to look at a trade, every time you're looking at four different time frames, five different time frames. Why? Because it's going to keep your trades more reliable. It's going to tell you when to get out of a trade, right? Or meaning when not to take a trade, like we did on that two minute chart. And it's also going to help you potentially get into other trades sooner. Multiple time frames are everything. Okay. Obviously, not as important as money management, not as important as psychology but knowing multiple time frames is very 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 important guys okay and to end this off guys to end it off i just have to do it i apologize i've beaten a dead horse but you know what if it's already dead why not beat it some more if you don't figure this out right here everything we just talked about means nothing if you don't figure this out everything we just talked about means nothing you can take the greatest trade in the world and turn it into your worst nightmare using terrible money management. I will repeat it one more time. You can take the greatest pattern, greatest trade you have ever seen, do everything right with regard to entry criteria, and turn it into your worst nightmare if you don't use good money management. Maybe you let it go against you, don't take your stop loss, okay? So please, I implore you, please, don't be the goldfish who gets eaten up by the market. Don't be the person who was up 2.3 million and gave back 2.8. Don't be the person that's risking 40% of their trading account on one trade. Don't be the person that says they won't ever make that mistake again and makes it 50 more times. Don't be the person that reads 5K into 1.3 million and actually believes it. Don't be the person that risks 480% of their account just to make money. To be good in this business, guys, you have to control your risk. All right? I've said it before. Experienced traders control risk. Inexperienced traders chase gains. It's that simple. Okay? So I hope you guys learned a little bit from this. All right? I'm off my soapbox now for a little. Um, and remember, multiple time frames help get you in trades sooner. They help keep you out of bad trades as well. Okay? All right? That'll do it for this week's lecture. I hope you guys enjoyed that. To get more great educational content, subscribe to the Live Traders YouTube channel. This way you'll get email alerts every time I upload a new video.